TikTok parent company just made a large language model that thinks in latent space, that reasons in latent space. So instead of having a bunch of layers stuck, stacked up in a transformer, like 32 layers, this large language model will have fewer layers, like 24, but then it will pass the same thought, the same token multiple times throughout all of these layers, which doesn't happen in a transformer, normal transformer. So in traditional large language model, you have token that's input, sequence of tokens, it goes through all of the 32 layers and generates the next token. Here, you have input, it goes through all of the layers, which is fewer, for example, 24, and then loops back again, goes again, 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 like four times, and then outputs. And the amount of times it loops is determined dynamically. So depending on the difficulty of the problem, it can think for a longer or shorter period of time. So they compare this to a latent chain of thought. So at the end of each loop of 24 layers, so at the end of one pass, there is this exit gate that will determine if the token next token will be generated, if the reasoning process will stop or it will go back again through the layers. So this parameter Q is a, it's a threshold, it's a number and if the probability of exiting is higher than this threshold, it will exit, it will generate the next token. And if the probability is lower, then it will loop again until the probability is higher than the threshold Q. So I think it's very simple. So in the input you have, let's say you have a sequence of words or tokens, just like words, and each word is converted into vector embedding. So this is basic large language models. If you, uh, if you wanna understand this more, if you don't know this, then you can watch my videos coding Llama 4 from scratch, coding DeepSeq V3 from scratch. So this is just basic large language model, it's same. Input is the uh, sequence of tokens. Each token is represented with its vector embedding. And so when you pass through layers, all of the layers can either contain attention and feed forward or attention and a uh, mixture of experts. And so these, all of, this sequence just uh, keeps being edited, improved through all of these attention mechanisms, feed forwards. So the number of tokens stays the same. It's just the values of these embeddings change. Uh, they get context from, from around, from other tokens. So this is the classic attention mechanism. You can check those two videos to understand how large language models work in more detail. And so at the end, at the last layer, we still don't have the next token generated. The next token will be generated at the output head. Output head will produce the probabilities over entire vo token vocabulary for which token has what probability to be the next token. But that's done in the output head, so that's not done in the last layer. Uh, in, this, in this case, when we get to last layer, we don't go to output head, which would happen usually. But in this case, we will actually go back, depending on if this gate, uh, exit gate wants us to go back to loop again. Let's say we get to the last layer, now every token is well processed. Uh, if this exit gate gives probability of exiting lower than the threshold P, then we just go back with the same, with, with those processed, they just go back into the first layer and get processed even further now. And so in the next pass, now we're gonna add up the first exit probability plus the second exit probability. And if they are together over this threshold P, then it will exit, it will go to output head and generate the next token. So why did they decide to add up probabilities? I think this is just a design choice. You could also make it just look at the last probability as well and train it that way. I think it doesn't matter. What matters is uh, how or what they train it to do. So how is this uh, thinking process going on? Uh, what's the idea behind this exit gate and why does it uh, teach the model to think better with less compute? Well, to understand that, we need to understand uh, this innovation of exit gate. And they say that uh, training this is uh, tricky because uh, a lot of the times if it's not trained properly, it will almost always exit immediately or it will use all of the possible uh, loops, maximum possible loops. Join my school community to become AI researcher, link below the video. The first problem 
they would encounter is simply if you run more loops, the output token will be better. But uh, we don't want to run more loops because that costs more compute. But a large language model doesn't care and doesn't know about more compute. It's only trained, it's only objective is to just make the best possible token. So how do we deal with this? Because uh, we don't want to waste putting so much compute but get diminishing returns on improvement of the next token. They actually define this as collapse, where the model just learns to always choose the maximum amount of loops. So uh, in the first stage of training, they want the model to keep all of the probabilities of every amount of loops kind of similar, while learning a little bit which ones are better. So. Uh, for example, if you have uh, four loops, the model would have 25% chance to exit at first, 25 second, third, etc. So equal probability to exit at all four loops. And then they assign penalty. So uh, there is more loss if one of those loops gets higher probability. So it's like a KL divergence loss, which I made a video about. Uh, so you want it to be uniform, so they, they want, they force the model to make it uniform if some of the loops, like fourth last loop, has higher probability, then that will add a bit of loss. So the loss that's reduced by that uh, loop having higher probability must be even greater than the loss it gets from just making it more likely. So let me reiterate this. Uh, more simply and in a better way uh, in this first stage there is a price to pay for preferring some amount of loops so if the model wants to make some amount of loops more likely for this particular sequence of tokens and keep in mind every sequence of tokens will have its own separate decision on how many loops it wants to use so if for example last loop or let's say maximum amount of loops uh, is starting to become more preferred, more likely to happen. It will be punished the more it diverges from the uniform distribution of all having equal probability. So it better make sure that this improvement into in the loss is greater than the punishment it got from preferring that uh, loop amount of loops. So the LLM is kind of solving, okay, uh, yes, um, more loops are gonna make the better token, but is it better enough? Is the loss going down enough such that punishment I get, the increase in loss I get from just making this amount of loops more likely, is it worth it? And they do this through entropy, or maybe I can say uncertainty. So if all four loops, let's say there are four, maximum four loops, if all of them get 25% chance, there is high entropy, high uncertainty. Compare that to this case where first three loops have 1% chance and the fourth loop has 97% chance. Uh, model is very certain, very, high, uh, very, I should say very low entropy, very low uncertainty, very certain. So it will get punished in this case. They design it to be punished in this case more in this first stage. So it will only become more certain in some amount of loops if it actually reduces loss enough uh, that this punishment is worth it. After that, there is stage two, where they stop training the large language model itself. They just train this exit gate now. So this training is gonna be done a bit differently. They will measure how much does each loop improve the loss so they check some amount of loops let's say three loops what's the loss after predicting the next token after three loops and what's the loss after predicting the next token after fourth loop as well so they compare if the gain improvement is high enough so they just subtract a loss after third loop which is supposed to be a bit higher, minus loss after fourth loop, which is supposed to be lower, better. And that's the difference. I should say improvement after using that one extra additional loop. 
and so they simply have some threshold like 0 0.005 if the loss improvement is lower than this then it didn't improve enough and you it shouldn't use extra loop it's too it's not worth it and if it's equal to this as well it's not enough in their case but if it's higher improvement is higher than this number then uh, it's good and then they just generate these labels and then they just train this exit gate to learn based on the tokens on the context to um, predict this exact if it should continue or it should exit it's like supervised learning it already has correct labels and it's just uh, teaching it to generate these correct labels and the exit gate will be punished if it under things uses fewer loops than necessary uh, or if it overthinks uses more loops than necessary so that will be it for this video i think it's very interesting i want to leave this paper below join my school community to become ai researcher it's free for now but i'm gonna make it paid soon so hurry up link below the video